Hi and welcome to this video and as you can see we're back on the Peugeot 207 CC which has got the 1.6 THP or EP6 engine as we can see here. So in this video it's all about removing this gearbox which is the 20DP32 gearbox and next week we'll be looking at removing the clutch and the flywheel before doing a full tear down of this engine that destroyed itself for some reason. Um, that's why they're so infamous. But anyway, yeah, so if you enjoy this video and it's useful, do appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. And as always, have a good weekend. So the first thing to do is move the turbocharger auxiliary cooling pump to one side. But before we do that, we'll just have a quick look at the gearbox fixing locations. Okay, so let's go back to that cooling pump now. And there's two little screws there, which will come undone with an 8mm socket. So there's a picture there of the fixing. There we go. There's one out. We'll just pop the other one out. So that gives us access to one of the bolts that's holding the gearbox in position. And those screws are both the same length. So we can just push that out to one side now. Okay, so let's unbolt the starter motor. So we don't actually need to undo the electrical connections. We just need to take the three long screws out. So we use a six millimeter hex socket for that. And these screws are quite long. They're about 80 millimeters. There we go, that's one. So two are fitted from the inner side and one fits in on the end. So I always tend to check to make sure that the screws are all the same length, just in case you do get a different length and then you forget where that actually went. Okay, and the third screw for the starter motor is here, just above the gearbox. Pop that one out. And again, that is the same length as the other two. So we don't need to undo the electrical connections, we just need to pull the starter motor out of the way. And looking at the pinion now, I presume that's probably clutch disc material that's accumulated there on the end. Okay, so now we can undo the eight bolts and two nuts that are holding the gearbox onto the actual engine block. So with the engine hanging in the air, which is quite dangerous, we'll use a 13mm socket and undo these three lower bolts. So they're about 65mm long. And they look like that. We'll get the second one out. I'll be a lot happier when I can put the engine back on a stand Obviously, if one of those chains was to snap, that engine would swing with one hell of a force. It'd probably knock me out. So let's get this done quite quickly. There we go, that's the third one out. So I'm going to double check again that they're all the same length and they are. So we can pop those to one side. So what I can do now is just get to this other lower bolt... Um, or nut, should I say. So this is a 16mm, slightly larger nut there at the bottom. Obviously I can't access these if they're on the table, so I've got to do these with the engine in the air. There we go. So that's that nut. And I might as well do the one that's hiding behind the auxiliary cooling pump. And that's 13mm socket for this one. We'll just pop that one out like so. Again, they're all the same length at 65 millimeters. Just confirming that. Okay, so let's get that engine safely down onto my wobbly bench. Still wobbling around. The old ice hockey pucks were be quite useful for that, just to keep it steady. Oh, 
Okay, so we're working at the top of the engine. What I'm going to do now is just remove this earth lead with a 13 millimeter socket because it's sort of making it difficult for the camera to see um, the detail which I want it to see. We'll just pop that back. So we've also got a reversing switch here. We need to just pop that off because this loom's going to be coming off the gearbox. So there's three cable ties here. We need to very carefully cut. Now bear in mind the starter motor is connected to this loom. So as this loom comes away, it's actually going to come away with the starter motor attached. So just note that because the starter motor obviously is quite heavy and it's just being held now on the wiring. There we go. Okay, so we've just got to take this bracket off that holds that wiring loom. That's a 13 millimeter socket just to remove the two nuts. There we go, there's one of them. And then we just do the one on the other side. So everything's quite crammed in this engine. I mean, you can see the oil filter there on the left. Um, not the easiest location for an oil filter. It really is crammed on this engine. Okay, so we can see two, well, one's a stud, which we're gonna undo now. So that's 16 millimeter socket. And this is a stud with like a nut permanently fixed on it. Like that. And then the other one is actually a nut because the stud is permanently fitted into the engine. But it's actually quite tight to access this. So you may want to adapt something to get a socket in there. And again, that's 16 millimeters. So this is the final fixing that's holding the gearbox onto the engine block. So I won't undo that all the way because I just want to see if I can break things loose. Um, because that, leaving that one on but loose does give me some sort of safety as opposed to the, end, the gearbox just suddenly dropping onto the floor or something silly. So I want to make sure it's just completely away and off those studs. But it's getting caught on the lower studs because it's at an angle there. Obviously gravity is pulling that heavy gearbox down. But I think we're away now so I'll just take that last nut off and then we should be able to just pull the gearbox off the input shaft to the gearbox. And we'll see what we can see. There we go. This is quite heavy. It would be easier with two people. So like I said, it's, there's two um, sort of studs there that are holding it on. I was sliding it off those two studs. So we can see a very rusty pressure plate there and a flywheel. And quite a dusty clutch housing. So there's our release bearing. Okay, so I'll give that a bit of a clean up and I'll take some photographs of that. But anyway, so we'll have a quick look over. So the next video will be to remove that flywheel and the clutch. Uh, be interesting to see how much wear is on that clutch. Okay, and as always, here's a bit of talk and other information on the gearbox and then some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer.
Okay, so you've been watching how to remove the gearbox on the Peugeot 1.6 litre EP6 engine. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel, and please like and subscribe. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in November 2023, and I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, and X as Coats and Gators.